Adam, some of your research shows that the federal complex is becoming increasingly militarised. Is it true? Because I can't believe that it is. This better not be fake news. This not better not be misinformation. How can the IRS, who are an organisation who have the simple job of innocently collecting taxes for the betterment of American civilians and citizens, be spending money on guns? Tell me you're making that up. Tell me it ain't true, Adam. We're the subject matter expert on this, Russell, all the way back to 2016. With our then honorary chairman, Dr. Tom Coburn, and I, we published an editorial at the Wall Street Journal, Why Does the IRS Need Guns? We've recently updated our numbers, and here are the findings. Since 2006, the Internal Revenue Service has purchased $35 million worth of guns, ammunition, and military-style equipment. But 10 million of that, of those purchases, have come since the pandemic started. So ahead of the pandemic, here's the numbers on the IRS gun locker. They own 4,500 weapons, including 600 shotguns and 500 long barrel rifles, which are AR-15 style weaponry. They own 15 submachine guns. Who knew the IRS had submachine guns in their basement? They had stockpiled 5 million rounds of ammunition, but just in the past two and a half years, they've purchased $10 million worth of additional weaponry and gear, including a million dollars worth of AR-15 style long barrel rifles, a half million dollars worth of shotguns, and $3.8 million worth of other gear. This is astonishing, it's extraordinary. If it weren't coming from a source as reliable as you, Adam, I would say it had to be disinformation. Because how can the government that continually advocate for tighter controls with some reasonable arguments on the weaponry and armory of the American public be spending so much money on arming themselves? Almost as if they want themselves heavily armed and they want you with nothing in your hands that can do any damage at all. That's astonishing. Well, let's look at the entire federal complex, even beyond the IRS. So since 2006, we've quantified at OpenTheBooks.com that the uh, 103 federal agencies have purchased $3.7 billion worth of guns, ammunition, and military-style equipment. Now, 27 of those agencies are traditional federal law enforcement agencies. They're housed at at the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security. But there are 76 rank and file traditional paper pushing agencies like Health and Human Services or the Environmental Protection Agency, like the IRS, like the Department of Education for crying out loud, like the Social Se Security Administration. Those 27 agencies have loaded up on weaponry as well. In total, Russell, there are now 200,000 federal officers with arrest and firearm authority, and that number exceeds the number of United States Marines at 180,000. That's astonishing. Over here on our chat, they're saying they're making death and taxes one department. That's a fantastic quote from our chat. The two inevitabilities have ultimately aligned. Uh, excuse me, Adam, is it also true that the FBI is spending a staggering amount on paying informants? Is that true? So here are the latest numbers. And in 2021, I put these numbers up in my then column at Forbes. The FBI, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and the ATF, Alcohol, Alcohol Tobacco, and Firearms, during uh, six-year and five-year periods, they spent $550 million on paid informants. If you break that number down, the FBI spent about $300 million between 2012 and 2018 paying informants. They did not disclose the number of their paid informants. The DEA spent about $200 million. They did disclose their informants. 18,000 people were paid to be an informant between the years of 2011 and 2015. The ATF paid about 2,000 people to be informants and they spent about $20 million. What does this suggest to you about the nature of government and the way that it is funded? What does it suggest to you about the nature of government and their relationship with media? What kind of, given your, the depth and breadth and detail of your experience, Adam, what type of government would you like to see in America? What level of federalization, localization, democracy do you think is required to stop what appears to be inherent governmental corruption that is not a bug but a feature of a deeply corrupted system? 
So here's what we can all agree on, Russell. I don't care if you're left, right, or center. People on the left, they want their tax dollar to serve people who have real needs. The people on the right, you know, they want to be left alone. They want to limit government to the core services. But here's what we can all agree on, that every dime that government taxes and spends within reason should be online in real time. Now, at OpenTheBooks.com, we actually have a phrase for this, every dime online in real time. And I want to invite everybody watching the program here today to our website at OpenTheBooks.com. Last year, we filed 55,000 Freedom of Information Act requests, and we captured nearly, not all, but nearly every dime taxed and spent at every level of government across the entire country. So if you're concerned about the policies in your local school district, you can come to our website, you can search even the payrolls, and oftentimes the vendor checkbooks right in your local municipality, county, or school district, all the way to Washington, D.C. Stay free with Russell Brand. See it first on Rumble.